Welcome back to the PSN Commanders Network. It's your boy Tonk and Attack. I am back with another video. If I get to a glory to God for God's right now, God's open doors in pay with all the people in the Lord's name. We pray amen. Today's video, we have to rap about these guys, the Washington Commanders, but specifically Jaden Daniels and how the Jaden Daniels era is now here in Washington. What does it mean for Jaden Daniels? What does it mean for us? And what are my expectations for Jaden and the commanders going forward if we start this new era of our new franchise quarterback? Cool. Um, shout out to Kelsey Nelson. Uh, she doesn't want to put franchise next to his name yet, but our new number two pick in Jaden Daniels. So if I get too far into it, uh, quick verse of the day I have for you guys. Philippians 4.13. Uh, the Bible does state that I can do all through Christ who gives me strength. So uh, you don't rely on your own strength, your own strength only so far, but with Christ's strength, you can go through anything, you can get through any challenge, any obstacle that comes down your way. Let's get right to today's video. You want to skip to the 110 mark, you can get to today's content. So, the Jaden Daniels era is here. Uh, JD is here. We don't know if it's JD5, JD7. Uh, I don't think we're going to give anyone else the number seven after the late Dwayne Haskins Jr. But uh, we'll see what jersey number he does get. Uh, we will assume that it will not be five. Uh, Trust Boy probably will keep his number. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, if if Trust can sell it to him or whatever or they work it out. I don't know. But forget the jersey number thing. He should be getting zero. Marcus Mariota bumps off one more zero. His bump. What up? Jane Daniels is a very interesting prospect. He's a very interesting quarterback. He has all the tools. The only thing I think that will hold Jaden back is the lack of an elite arm. Uh, that's one thing that guys like Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick, have that Jaden doesn't have that's a dynamic dual threat, but what he is is smart, he has great pocket presence. Also, I like about him is that he does read through progressions before growing, and he he takes good care of the football. Those three things will at least allow you to be a game manager your first year as a rookie. Right? So I've been to manage the game this year, not make too many mistakes, get the ball to Terry. Uh, I won't give stat predictions, but I'm hoping for 65% completion percentage. This is what I'm hoping for. 3,500 yards passing, 20 touchdowns, nine interceptions. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Washington goes eight and nine. Contends for a playoff spot late, but just doesn't get it done. Can't get in. But, you know, we're right there in the thick of it the whole entire time. It's about week 16, week 17, or even week eight, week 18. Winner get in, but we just don't get in, right? The next year, however, is sophomore year. That's when I expect the commanders to be contending for something. Uh, kind of similar to CJ Stroud. They want to see how he played. How, did he play well? Is he going to be the guy going forward? And should we go all in? Right, so they, they they gave the year, they made the playoffs, they win a playoff game, they blow out their opponent. See, they throw touchdowns over the freaking place. The kids out here balling. My man saying all great, all great, all praise and glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, man. And everybody's going crazy, man. It's just beautiful, man. Shout out to CJ, man. But we have that kind of year this year. Washington does that is. But now you're talking. Then now you can, okay, we can go trade for Brandon Ayuk or Simon Free Agency, whatever. They got to tag and trade him. The Niners, dude, you can do that. You can go get a, a premier pass for next to Dorrance Armstrong, like a Daniil Hunter-esque caliber type of player, right? You can go get those players next year and really start to build a a, a, a bully. Right now, we're we in the infant stages of a bully. They picked up a Bobby Wagner, Frankie Louvu. They still got Terry McLuhan on offense. You got Terhan Dodson. You drafted Luke McCaffrey, who I think is going to be really good. He got, he reminded me of Glass of Cooper Cup. That's what remind me of a Glass of Cooper Cup, man. Glass of Cooper Cup keeps, keeps the cornerbacks getting cooked. 
up and down the field. Yes, sir. Glass of Cooper Cup goes a long way to cook these folks. Yes, sir. So, with all that being said, I do expect the commanders to be content to be to be not contending, competitive every week. I don't expect one blowout this year. Not one. I don't care. None. Nada. Zelch. Zero. Zero. No blowouts. So this year, no blowouts. Seven to eight wins. Jaden shows flashes of greatness. But also shows flash that he's a rookie. Luke McCaffrey shines a little bit. It looks like a glass of Cooper Cup. Terry being Terry freaking McLaurin. Jahan Dotson flashing and shining in Cliff's offense. Ryan Robinson and Austin Eckler being a nice one-two punch. Not elite, no, but good. But a nice, good one-two punch. Top 10 duo in football. Offensive line being solid, not great, but solid. Not terrible, but okay, average. Defensive line. Pass rush, I expect it to be below average. I don't believe in Clean and Farrell. I don't believe in Der Dante Fowler like that. They're solid, they're okay. I like Doris Armstrong, though. Now, our interior defensive line pressure. That should be pretty good. Edge rushers, a eh, little bit more to be desired. Linebackers, I expect a huge improvement. We're going from Cody Barton getting his ankles bent to the shadow room, as uh, Real Robinson would say. Uh, Jamin Davis out getting cooked like Swiss cheese. And, well, so you see when you cook like Swiss cheese, he's still on the roster. But you get my point, right? And then you have, oh, what's homeboy name, bro? David Mayonnaise. Put manage arm with sandwiches. Disgusting. To Bobby Wagner. Be wags. Be wag. Be wag. Hey, be wag. Be wag. To Frankie Louvu. And a little sprinkle of Jamin Davis. Now we're talking, Slim. Now we're talking, Slim. And the secondary, I think, should be vastly improved. He married with four, should play a lot better. Oh, sorry, y'all. I forgot. A.J. Brown the third should play. Y'all not going to give me not to say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't call him out his government until he gets his act together, right? Ben is saying groupie. Hope he gets his act together. Quan Martin. Hit the Quan. Hit the Quan. Hey, hit the Quan. Hit the Quan, baby. The Quan, baby. Jeremy Chen. Ain't no Cam Curl in the building, but we got Jeremy Chin in the building. That's that's all right, Slim. All pro Revo. More specials doing this Doug Dizzle. And finally. Finally. So I've answered about that, right? But the safety position should be very interesting. Derek Force, too. So this is going to be a very interesting 53-man roster that they're going to try to build today, this offseason, and they kind of start to figure out who's going to be and who's not. Their practice squad they're going to come up with is going to be very spicy. But the Jay and Dang's era is here. I expect competitiveness. I expect grit. I expect fight. I expect intensity. I expect all in every week to win a ball game. I expect effort. I expect discipline. And I expect this kid, Jane Daniels, to at least be a top 10 quarterback before his tenure is over in Washington. I expect this kid to be a 10 to 12 year starter, multiple time pro bowler, and prayfully a Super Bowl champion. That's going to do it for y'all, man. It's your boy, Tech. Hope you have a great one. Like, comment, subscribe, comment your thoughts on this on Phone and Grave. Catch y'all next one, man. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Peace, girl.